One aspect of the revival of interest in cassette tapes in recent years that has often been lamented is the high cost and scarcity of good quality, newly manufactured blank cassette tapes. For example, a 10-pack of these ones here will set you back anywhere from around $40 to $60 plus shipping. And We Are Rewind, makers of this very attractive looking but only mediocre sounding new stereo cassette player, recently introduced their own new blank cassette tapes at a cost of $70 for a pack of 10. Ouch. And new old stock cassettes from the 80s or 90s that are still sealed are not necessarily cheaper due to high demand and limited supply. One suggested alternative are used cassette tapes. You can often get a bargain if you don't mind the cases being a bit scratched or beat up or sometimes missing entirely and needing to erase someone's miserable recordings. But there's an even cheaper way to amass a collection of cassette tapes to make your own recordings on. The Bible. At least here in the U.S. it's common to come across these book on tape editions of all or part of the Bible. In this case it's the New Testament of the New American Bible on 16 cassette tapes in this binder. I got this at a thrift store and the price sticker says $2.99 but they actually had a 50% off sale on green price stickers so I ended up paying about $1.50 for all these cassette tapes. I'm sure whoever originally owned this has since moved on to newer technologies to gain access to the good book. In fact, there's an entire subgenre of tech products over the years dedicated to the sole purpose of reading or listening to the Bible. So if you don't mind being a bit sacrilegious, you can reuse these cassette tapes to make your own recordings on. But first, let's listen to a little sample of what the narration sounds like. Jesus said to his disciples, I assure you, only with difficulty will a rich man enter into the kingdom of God. I repeat what I said. It is easier for a camel to pass through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. One of the first things anyone who used cassette tapes learned about them is how to tape over a tape using a little piece of tape. And of course you can do the same thing with these. I don't know if it's a sin to tape over the Bible, but if it is... Let the man among you who has no sin be the first to cast a stone at her. You might think these would be poor quality cassettes because you don't need high fidelity sound for spoken word content. But if I use my official cassette tape winding tool to wind this tape forward a bit to expose the actual magnetic material in them, that actually looks very high quality. It's very smooth and shiny. There's no wrinkles or lines in it. And if I shine a bright light on it, it's not semi-transparent like a lot of the cheaper and thinner tape was. So let's hook up a cassette deck and listen to what kind of quality we can get when making our own recordings on these Bible tapes. So I got my little piece of tape on it to allow me to make my own recording on it. And first I'll use some test tones to check how close the calibration of this tape is to the IEC standard. And this is a three head deck so I can either monitor the source, which in this case is a CD player, or I can monitor the actual recording it's making in real time. So first I'll start a 400 hertz test tone at 0 dB. Then I'll start recording it to tape. And it's a little bit below where it should be, but I can boost that up with this control. So just a little bit of boost there, and now it's properly calibrated for the level. Now to check the bias, I'll play a 10 kilohertz tone at minus 10 dB, and I'll record it to the tape. And it's a little bit below that, it's at minus 15, so if I bring down the bias, I can bring it up to where it should be at minus 10 dB, maybe a little bit more. And that's properly calibrated now. So to calibrate this tape, we needed to increase the level and reduce the bias. But it is within the range of adjustment, so it should be a pretty decent tape. If it was a really cheap tape, we wouldn't be able to calibrate it, even with these controls at their maximum settings. And what better song to use to tape over the Bible 
then Dinner with the Diablo from the Backtracks 2 Music Library. On the Lord's Day I was caught up in ecstasy, and I heard behind me a piercing voice like the sound of a trumpet, which said, But now I live, forever and ever. I hold the keys of death and the netherworld. I don't know about you, but I think that sounded excellent, especially for a Type 1 tape without any Dolby noise reduction. But when going through these tapes, I noticed that while most of them have a translucent leader, this one has a clear leader, which could indicate that these were not all made from the same tape stock. And that's a risk you get with these box sets, you don't know if they used whatever scraps of leftover tape they could find, so it's possible some of them could be very good quality, and others not so much. Here's that tape with the clear leader, and when I calibrated it, it did require slightly more level than the first tape, but the bias was the same. So I'm not sure if that's different tape stock or if that's just part of the normal variation from one tape to the next. And I recorded another track on it from the Backtracks Music Library. This time, Cosmopolitan Blues. And this time I used Dolby B noise reduction. On my Denon DRM24HX. Second Epistle of Paul to the Corinthians, Chapter 1. Another excellent quality result. Another thing I notice about these tapes is that they're not all the same length, which makes sense because they're split up according to the books and chapters of the Bible, and obviously some are longer than others. So using my Phillips deck, I fast forwarded all the tapes from beginning to end and wrote down the counter readings, and the longest tape turned out to be the first one at 3262, and the shortest tape was number 6 at 2284. So I pulled out those two tapes and I played them in the real-time counter mode. And that longest one is 42 minutes and 57 seconds per side. And the shortest one is 28 minutes and 44 seconds per side. Which is not such a big deal if you're just making mixtapes or recording from the radio or any kind of other general purpose recording. But if you are planning to for example, release an album using these as your duplication cassettes that would pose a challenge. Although these are screwed shells, so you could open them up and cut the tape to exactly the length you need for your album. Another thing you'll probably want to do when reusing tapes is remove the original labels. But that may not necessarily be so difficult, because I noticed on this one, it's already starting to come off. So probably with just a little bit of heat 
and maybe some chemicals. It would be probably pretty easy to remove the labels without leaving any residue behind. And of course there are non-religious box sets of cassette tapes as well, such as this one whose purpose is to help you learn Morse code. And unfortunately didn't work for me. No code tech was as far as I got. But you can see it has six cassettes in it. And these also appear to have pretty decent tape stock in them. It's also nice and shiny and smooth. Generally mass duplicated cassettes from the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, they generally use pretty good tape stock. So almost anything from that period should make good recordings when you reuse it. So is it a good idea to reuse audio and video cassettes? Sure, just don't do it without your friend's permission. But we're friends. Friends? You tape baseball over my yoga tapes. 